field installation instructions for the D7 unitized switch. The mounted position is horizontal upright. Voltages are 15, 27, and 34 and one half thousand volts. The Chance D7 is a distribution class three phase gang operated air disconnect switch. Adding the duo gap expulsion load interrupters makes the D7 a load break switch. Before removing the switch from its crate base, visually inspect the switch for damage, such as broken insulators, bent pieces, and so forth. If the switch is damaged, contact the freight carrier who delivered the switch. Remove the control parts from the switch crate base and lay them out for a visual inspection. These parts include the operating pipe, the control handle, the control handle locking segment, and associated installation hardware. Next, operate the switch slowly using the drive, or in this case, the center phase. Several things should be noticed during this operation. Notice that as the blades open, the arc bolt shown here slides along the stainless steel arcing horn. Then the pickup bolt mounted at the end of the copper blade contacts the interrupter trip lever and slides free of the arcing horn and rotates to trip the interrupter. Upon closing, the arc bolt contacts the arcing horn first before the pickup bolt hits the interrupter's pickup lever. In the fully closed position, notice that the arc bolt is free of the arcing horn and about a quarter inch air gap exists. If in operation, this would allow the load current to flow only through the copper blade and stationary contacts. At this point, you may unbolt the switch from the crate base and make one last visual inspection prior to lifting the switch. In mounting of the D7 switch, reference should be made to the illustrations included with the printed instructions and also to the control drawing furnished with each switch. All through bolts and lag screws need to be supplied by the installing crew. Prior to lifting the switch, locate and drill the pole mounting holes as specified on the control drawing. Then mount the bottom three quarter inch through bolt loosely so that the switch's slotted base can be set on it prior to the final mounting at the top of the pole. You'll notice that a pair of lifting angles are provided to hoist the switch. These have been attached to the cross arm and are to be removed after the switch is installed. Attach hoisting slings and clevises to these lifting angles.
Next, attach a guide rope to one of the dead ending eyes on either of the outside faces to help control the switch as it's being raised into the mounting position. Slowly lift the entire pre-assembled D7 switch. There is a safety warning at this stage that should be noted, and that is, do not lift the switch by rigging to the live or current carrying parts. Contacts and blades could be bent, causing a blade to miss the interrupter. If then installed, a resulting arc could damage equipment and perhaps injure an operator. The switch unit should be mounted to the pole as shown on the control drawing and is illustrated in figure two of the instruction sheet. Set the bottom slot of the mounting bracket onto the already installed through bolt. Then install the upper three quarter inch through bolt and tighten both securely. Now remove the two lifting angles from the switch cross arm. Another safety warning should be adhered to, and that is, failure to remove the lifting angles will greatly reduce the basic insulation level, which could result in phase to phase and or phase to ground flashover. Next, fasten the mounting straps to the pole by bending the mounting straps into the side of the pole and secure them with two half-inch lag screws. Now the cross arm braces, when they've been supplied with the switch, can be installed with the hardware provided and a 5 8 inch diameter through bolt as shown on the control drawing and in figure two of the instructions. After the cross arm braces have been installed, it's now time to connect the operating pipe. The top section of the operating pipe on this particular switch is a fiberglass section 10 feet long. It's easily installed to the center phase by attaching the universal coupling to the bottom shaft of the drive phase. Use the bolts provided and tighten securely.
now move down the pole to install the first control pipe guide bearing. This guide bearing can be located by moving the universal section or top operating section into the pole and marking approximately six inches below the bottom of the universal section. Drill the hole for the guide bearing and install it as shown. Tighten a 5 8 inch diameter through bolt and install two 5 8 inch diameter lag screws in the side holes as shown. These must be secured tightly. Feed the next section of operating pipe through the guide bearing just installed and attach it to the universal section with the hardware provided. Now move down the pole to the end of the control pipe section just installed and attach the pipe coupling that's provided with the switch. Do not tighten this coupling yet. Again, install a guide bearing approximately six inches below the pipe coupling for guiding the bottom section of control pipe. Once the through bolt and lag screws have been installed in the lower guide bearing, you're now ready to cut the final bottom section of the control pipe to length. Mark a spot on the pole where you'd like the operating handle located and drill the pole to attach the locking segment as shown. Install two 5 8 inch through bolts 
being sure to include the braided ground strap provided on the lower through bolt. Tighten these through bolts securely and drive two 5 8 inch lag screws into the side holes of the locking segment. Next, feed the final section of control pipe up through the guide bearing and then feed down through the locking segment and mark the pipe approximately one foot below the locking segment. Cut the pipe with a hacksaw where you've marked it. Then feed this piece of control pipe up through the lower guide bearing and then down through the locking segment, being sure to put on the ground strap collar and the control handle before feeding it into the locking segment assembly. Then attach the upper end of the pipe to the coupling and tighten both bolts on the pipe coupling securely. Next, tighten the ground strap collar to the operating pipe. The ground strap collar should be approximately six inches above the permanently mounted locking segment. This ground strap should have enough slack to allow the operating pipe to rotate freely from the switch's closed position to the open position. Next, raise the operating handle mounting approximately one half inch above all the parts on the locking segment assembly and tighten the carriage bolt only. Install a suitable ground wire from a utility supplied ground to the parallel groove clamp connected to the braided ground strap. You'll notice that a hole has been provided in the lower right hand corner of the locking segment for mounting this parallel groove clamp. Now you're ready to operate the switch. If the switch blades are closed and the handle falls freely into the closed position of the locking segment, the switch handle has not been adjusted properly.
Adjust the closed position of the locking segment as shown. Tighten the bolts that secure the locking segment assembly. Now operate the switch again. Notice that now the operator must force the handle into the closed position. This puts a desired torsional force, or wrap up, in the universal shaft, holding all the blades fully and securely closed. This helps prevent the blades from opening under momentary fault currents or conductor vibrations. This is a very important step in the installation of the switch. Next, open the switch to be sure that the blades open parallel to the cross arm or at a 90 degree angle with the conductor. Adjustment of the locking segment in the open position does not require wrap up as it does in the closed position. Once you are sure that the switch has the necessary torsional force in the operating pipe in the closed position, and is parallel to the cross arm in the open position, tighten the piercing set screws securely. Installation of the switch is now complete. At this stage, you're now ready to cut in your conductors and make both electrical and mechanical connections to the pre-assembled pre-adjusted and unitized CHANCE D7 switch.